नीलातुंगस्तनगिरी तटी सुप्त मुद्भोद्य कृष्णम पारार्थ्यम स्वम श्रुति शत शिरसिद्ध मध्यापयंती स्वोच्छिष्टायाम स्रजिनि गलितम या बलात्कृत्य मुंते गोदात अस्यै नमहिदमिदम भूय एवास्तु भूयहा नमस्सभायै This month of Margali is considered to be very auspicious amongst Sri Vaishnavas. In this month, we can witness every Sri Vaishnava household and every Sri Vaishnava temple reciting the divine Tirupavai and bowing down and singing the glory of of the composer of the Tiruppavai, Shri Andal. So, it would be appropriate to sing the hail of Goddess Andal and her Tiruppavai in this month in the language of English. By the divine wish of Andal and the sacred ordainment of Adiyan's Acharyas, Adiyan is getting into this verbal service or vacha kaikaryam of rendering a discourse in Tiruppavai in English in this month. Sri Andal is known to be the divine incarnation of Bhumi Devi, the consort of Lord Narayana. It is said that once upon a time, Bhumi Devi was abducted by an asura named Hiranyaksha, a demon. This demon went and hid Bhumi Devi in the waters of deluge called Pralaya. Searching for Bhumi Devi, Lord Narayana took the form of a wild boar called Varaha and went down into these waters, fought with Hiranyaksha and redeemed Bhumi Devi back. Lord Varaha came up with Bhumi Devi held in his wonderful tusks. This is described by Nammalwar in a beautiful phrase where he says, Neela varai irandu pirai kavvi nimirnda doppa kola varaha mundrai nilam kottidai kondai endai. The Lord took the form of kola varaha meaning the beautiful boar and he held nilam that is bhoomi and this seemed as if the moon was being held by beautiful tusks of a boar or the beautiful tusks of a boar themselves seemed like a crescent shaped moon on which another moon like Bhumi Devi was placed. Such beautiful explanation was given by Nammalwar to this wonderful scene. So when Bhumi Devi was thus seated and comforted by her concert Lord Varaha, she asked him a few questions. She said to the Lord that, O Lord, you have saved me from this evil, from a great danger and I am really thankful to you for that. But O Lord, saving me alone would not be enough. I have my children. Lord Brahma is going to make some creations within me and many beings are going to come into existence into me. They are all my children. So I would like to know the way by which my children can get saved and emancipated like this. Like how you have redeemed me from the clutches of evil, I would like that my children are also redeemed from the clutches of this evil samsara. Could you kindly tell me the way by which my children can be saved and emancipated? Lord Varaha smiled and said, Wonderful is your karuna or mercy, my dear concert. I am bound to give you an answer for this. Okay, so let me tell you a simple way by which your children can get saved. The simple way to emancipation or getting saved is to please me. If you please me, 
I can grant you emancipation or moksha. Bhuvi Devi then asked the next obvious question. What then, Lord, is the way to please you? Could you please tell me how you will get pleased? The Lord was kind enough to tell her not one but many ways to please him. And Bhumi Devi also kept on asking for more options so that if one of the ways could not be pursued by her children, they could opt for the other. So as she kept on asking, she hit upon two ways which seemed easy according to her that her children could follow to get to the Lord. What were these two ways? They were very simple ways. Lord Varaha told Bhumi Devi that if one would do service to him with flowers or adorn him with flowers, he would get pleased. So, flower service or Pumalai Kainkaryam as it is termed was something that was going to please the Lord. Bhumi Devi took a note of this. The first option that she felt would be very very feasible for her children to follow. The next option that she felt would be feasible was singing the praise of the Lord. Lord Varaha told Bhumi Devi that if one would sing with devotion about him then he would be pleased with that service. So this service is called as Pa Malai Kainkaryam or the devotional singing service. Bhumi Devi felt that this was also an easy way which her children could opt for and try to get close to the Lord. So making note of these two, she decided to preach this to her children. She thought instead of just telling them the way to do it, she would rather demonstrate it to them. Because as we know, demonstration works wonders. An ordinary teacher is known to teach whereas a great teacher is known to inspire. And how does a teacher inspire? By being exemplary or by demonstrating whatever is to be done by herself. So that is exactly what Bhumi Devi chose. She chose to come down to this earth, take an incarnation and demonstrate how Pumalai Kainkaryam and Pamalai Kainkaryam are done. That is how flower service and divine singing service is done. For this purpose, she came down as Andal. So, this divine incarnation of Bhumi Devi came as Andal. And this is sung by Swami Vedanta Deshika. Sakshat Kshamam Karunaya Kamalami Vanyam Godam Ananya Sharanaha Sharanam Prapadye. Swami says, Kshama herself, Bhumi herself, Sakshat, came down as Goda Devi and she alone is our refuge because she is the one who taught us that the Lord is our refuge by doing such service to Him. Now, this story of Bhumi Devi deciding to take an incarnation happened in the beginning of the Shweta Varaha Kalpa. That is long, long ago. Kalpa is a span of time which is very huge. And within Kalpas, we have Chaturyugas, many Chaturyugas. And one of these Chaturyugas, Chaturyugas denotes four Yugas. And one of these four yugas is the Kali Yuga. That is a much smaller time of span, span of time as compared to a Kalpa. So, in this Kali Yuga, in this 28th Kali Yuga, Andal has been incarnated. Whereas this episode of Bhuma Devi asking Varaha about all these options happened long, long ago. What is the reason that Bhumi Devi took so much time to come and take incarnation as Andal? The reason is Bhumi Devi was actually waiting for the right father to whom she could be incarnated. And this father 
was none other than the divine alvar known as peri alvar now alvars are the incarnations of lord narayana's divine weapons and divine ornaments so one such incarnation was peri alvar or vishnu chitta as he is more popularly known as in the north shri vishnu chitta was absorbed in doing flower service to the lord at shri villiputur in tamil nadu in south india the lord vatapatra shai of shri villiputur was the deity to whom he would go and submit flower garlands to every day for making these flower garlands he had made a beautiful garden which he used to tend with his, his own hands he would manure it he would water it he would pluck the flowers and he would make garlands with his own hands daily for the lord and thus he was absorbed deeply in this flower service one fine day it was a tuesday and it was the month of adi according to the tamil calendar and the star prevailing was puram so on this adi puram a tuesday he found a beautiful female child below a tulsi plant in his garden he saw the child and found that she had some divine sparkle on her face he thought it was the lord's gift to him and it was his duty to bring up this child with devotion so he took the child and named her as kodai or goda kodai in tamil language means garland or malai since periyalvar was absorbed in doing this garland service malai service to the lord he thought that the lord himself has gifted this malai kodai to him and so he named her as garland kodai itself the sanskritized version of kodai is goda so this kodai or goda started growing up under the divine guidance of periyalvar she was taught the stories of lord krishna from childhood and so was nurtured only with his thoughts as kodai grew up she saw her father submitting these divine garlands to the lord every day one day she became curious as to whether this garland would actually be comfortable for the lord she was worried that sometimes certain petals would probably prick his his tender body they say his body is very very sukumar extremely tender extremely soft so she was worried about whether some petals would actually go and prick the lord she wanted to find out for herself so she actually picked up the garland and wore it on her neck just to get the experience of how the lord would would feel like and she saw that the garland was actually soft and nice velvety in fact she thought the lord would really be enjoying it and how would the lord feel looking at the garland on himself so she went to the mirror and looked at herself she was looking nice so she actually started enjoying herself in the mirror in the lord's garland but she knew that what she was doing was not correct because whatever we offer to the lord should be offered without being used by us before that is sanctity that is purity so she was breaking the sanctity by wearing the garland herself so she knew that somewhere she was not right so she quietly secretively went and placed back the garland in the same basket that periyalvar had placed it before and periyalvar very unknowingly took it to the temple and offered it to the lord the lord also happily took it now this event of kodai wearing the garland became a practice because she started enjoying it so she was doing it secretively every day until one day she was caught red handed by periyalvar periyalvar one day caught hold of her looking at herself in the mirror with the lord's garland and he became furious this was a blunder according to him how could she do it 
So Periyarwar felt really bad. So he discarded that garland. He fasted and he plucked new flowers from his garden, made a new garland, went and offered it to the Lord. That night, he had a dream wherein the Lord said that he was very unhappy with the garland that Periyarwar offered to him that day. Periyarwar thought it was only because his daughter had wronged and worn the garland herself before offering it to him. That was a blunder. It was an apachara. So he actually apologized to the Lord. To which the Lord laughed and said, O Periyarwar, you do not know what exactly was happening in the past few days. Past few days, your garland had been much, much better than what you used to offer to me before. You know why? Because your daughter was wearing the garland and offering it back to me. So I found a new fragrance and a new comfort in that garland. But today, you actually discarded the garland that she had worn and you made the old kind of garland that you used to make before. So the new enjoyment that had come to me was totally gone today. That is why I did not feel good when you offered this garland to me today. So please understand that I actually enjoy the divine garland worn by your daughter rather than anything else. So your daughter is special and her garland is even more special to me. And she is now to be known as Sudi Kodutta Sudar Kodi. That is the one who wore the garland and gave to the Lord. Periyarwar got up from his dream and realized that his daughter was not an ordinary one. She was also divine and she was made for the Lord. He got this realization and from then on, he made it a practice to give the garland worn by his daughter to the Lord. Now, would this practice be accepted by the world? How would they accept a garland worn by a girl given to the Lord? So, in order to make the world accept this practice, the Lord also appeared in the dream of the priest of the temple of Sri Villiputur and told that he is desirous of the garland which has been worn by Andal. Yes, he said Andal. Why? Because this Kodai who gave him this garland had actually come to rule over him and the one who rules over is called Andal. So thus, this Kodai became Sudi Kodutta Sudar Kodi and became Andal. And this Andal then in course of time became desirous of marrying the Lord. She was actually destined for him and Periyarwar had come to know of this from this episode. So he said that the Lord will come down to marry you but you need to wait till the right time comes. So in order to wait till the right time came, Andal decided to spend her time thinking of the Lord and how to actually think of the Lord in a nice way. She actually thought of the Leelas of Lord Krishna and decided to enact whatever happened during the time of Krishna Vatara. At the time of Krishna Vatara, the Gopikas were also desirous of marrying the Lord as she desired. And in order to fulfill their desire, the Gopikas followed a particular Vrata or prayer format called the Katyayani Vrata. So, Andal decided to enact this Vrata in her own way. She called this Vrata as Margali Vrata or Pavai Nombu. And what she actually did in the Pavai Nombu, she has recorded in 30 Pasurams known as the Tiruppavai. So now we can get the link back to the old story of Bhumi Devi and Varaha. Bhumi Devi came down as Andal to show us how to please the Lord by doing flower service and by doing song service. That is Pamalai and Pumalai. The Pumalai service. She showed in the Garland episode and the Pamalai service or the singing service she showed by composing the Tiruppavai. Now, we may not have the kind of devotion that Andal had, but 
by speaking about the fact that she did flower service and song service or listening to these facts itself would lead us to the path of emancipation so from today onwards let us start enjoying the meaning of the song service or pa malai of andal the tiruppavai this was the introduction to the tiruppavai also known as the avatarikai